countdown for seconds. Hi guys, we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day everybody. My name is Albert Tan from Download Silo. Everybody knows me. And today we have a special guest from this uh, time, Graham. Uh, he's a CEO and founder and his name is uh, Esan Elahi. Esan, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for introducing me, Albert. Okay, that's good. You know. So before we start, uh, let us do some housekeeping, uh, housekeeping for the audience. So guys, I will just... Uh, type in this uh, link for you to actually put your name and also your photo so that we can see you in the back end okay just click that link uh https slash double slash wave video dot uh, slash live slash uh, slash facebook i always very difficult to pronounce that so that is the link so if you can uh, see that link just, just click that to give permission to facebook to show your name as well as a photo in our back end and we have some guys already, uh, HTM Suja, Staff Ross, as well as uh, Mohan Nirola. Okay, guys, I think you can see us and uh, hear us. So before we start, uh, I would like to give you a small introduction about this uh, today's webinar. So today's webinar is actually uh, regarding this uh, new app called uh, Timegram. And this is a company founded by Esan. Uh, Esan is actually from Pakistan. And as usual, everybody knows that, you know, uh, for a big company, even small company, uh, you might want to know what your employee uh, timeline or maybe what you call time tracking. So this is a software uh, for it. And there are a lot of features in this uh, timegram. I'm not going to tell you because uh, I will leave it to Esan. So Esan, uh, before we start, can we ask you some questions so that the audience will get to know you better? Absolutely. Okay, Esan. We know that you're from Pakistan and can you tell me when did you actually started this app, you know, or maybe this startup called Timegram? Sure. So I started Timegram uh, roughly a year and a half ago. And I started because I, I've been working remotely for companies in the US, Europe and Australia for the last seven, eight years now. Mm -hmm. And every time I used, I was working in such a company, I was asked to use the time tracker. Um, in as my career progressed in the last couple of years, I've been uh, working at senior leadership positions, uh, C-suite and director level. So in those positions, I was asked to use a time tracker for my team and I was managing that team. So I saw both sides of time tracking, right? As an employee and as a manager. And I had so noticed so many gaps in there. That's why I decided to build Timegram a year and a half ago. Okay, that means, uh, I mean, you actually use it, I mean, the need of it for you and then you actually start up this Timegram. So are you a developer yourself or you have a team of developer helping you? Uh, I'm a marketer, but I have an in-house software development team. I have mm -hmm. a CTO and I have own developers. How big is your team, you know, by the way? Uh, we have 14 people right now. Oh, that's quite a lot, you know, based on normal startup, you know, because normally a, a small startup will have a maybe five or, or people less, you know. So I believe yeah. uh, these 14 people, are they all based in Pakistan or are they distributed across the globe? Uh, they're all based in Pakistan. Like they're actually like I can see them uh, from like from my door. They're sitting <laughs> in another room. Yeah. Okay, good. So, where is your major market right now? I know may I ask you know for this uh, software. So three major markets. U.S. of course is the biggest one and accounts for like seventy percent of uh, all our people, all our potential customers. Uh, then we have Philippines and then we have India. So those are the, the three major markets for us. I can Germany see. is also a fourth market, but not that big right now. Okay, so US is an employer. Philippines yeah. and India are the employees, I believe, because... <laughs> so kind of, so Philippines and India, uh, and there we have potential customers who are providing services to companies in the US. So they're mm -hmm. like, they're providing team or outsourcing or team augmentation services. And they offer that, you know, we will provide you resources and then you can track your resources through this application. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. You know, I, yeah. I still remember, you know, 
I mean, my, my former company, they, they have a big company. They, they also outsource some of the product, I mean, services to India, some of the services into Philippines, you know. So I see that that is how this uh, software they actually track this uh, time management. Okay, without further ado, guys, uh, one more time, uh, if you just came in uh, for the audience, uh, please uh, click the link that I've, I put on the chat, you know, so that you can actually give permission to this uh, Facebook uh, to give us uh, permission to show your name as well as a photo uh, at the back end of the streaming platform. That's important because uh, when we interact, we know who we are we talking to. So without further ado, uh, Esan, please uh, show your best, what I call uh, features or, or whatever unique uh, features that to our audience so that they can convince that, no, this is the something that they are looking uh, to use it, you know, at least. No, or to buy it, you know. So let's go. Absolutely. Um, can you see my screen? Not, not this yes. one. Albert, yes, it's the one. other dashboard. Let me try it again. Okay, I just shared it again. Uh, yeah, it's shown. Okay. Okay. Can you see my dashboard? Yes. Good. Okay. So in the interest of time, and I know everybody's busy and just, I want to be cognizant of your time and I know how important that is. I will keep this brief and fast. If you have any questions, just use the chat box and I'll be happy to answer anything. So this is the main dashboard of Timegram. The idea behind Timegram is, um, I am, I'm sure a lot of you might have used time trackers before, but there are two primary types of time trackers. One is the invasive sort of prime tracker, like the upward time tracker, or time doctor hub stuff, the ones that take screenshots and monitor everything and show the managers in real time what people are doing. But the problem with those is uh, people, your employees are not comfortable tracking their time. And if they're not comfortable, they will always try to cheat the system. And if they're cheating the system, you as a manager or as an employer are not going to get good visibility into actual performance. You're just seeing that you know 40 hours of the week are being tracked, but the actual work suffers. The time is not tied closely to outcomes. So that's a problem with those sort of invasive trackers. On the other hand, you have those start stop timers like Clockify or Harvest. These timers say that, you know, you're starting on a task. Let's say you're working on a task called product roadmap and somebody starts working on it. They click a start button and they're, when they're done, they click a stop button. Let's say this task take like six hours according to start stop timer, which is basically a stopwatch, right? It's not tracking activity. It's just showing you uh, the duration between when the start button was clicked and when the stop button was clicked. You don't actually know if those six hours were actual work or not, or maybe somebody just like forgot to click stop or start. Uh, that happens a lot, right? So we wanted to find something in the middle, something that is that shows good performance visibility that ties time to actual outcomes and deliverables, but it should be still very less invasive, much uh, not like those screenshot based time trackers. That's why we built Timegram. I'll show you the video of how Timegram accomplishes this, how Timegram sits in the middle of the invasive trackers and the start stop timers, providing you both performance visibility and a non-invasive, a relatively non-invasive solution. So just to get started, this is the dashboard where you can just like quickly see uh, what employees you have. Um, if you hover over anybody, you see how many hours they've logged for this week, for this time period, September 25th to October 1st. You see their weekly capacity, 30 hours and active tasks. Note that for this demo, I'm using a demo account using dummy data, as you can see in this line here. If you go onto the Timegram website and sign up, you will also be able to start playing around with the solution using precisely this data that I'm showing you right now. So this just gives you a snapshot view of what your team is doing during the selected time period. You can just like say, change the time period however you want and see. So you'll see uh, active members, total capacity. You can set weekly capacity for anybody. It's custom. You can set it per user or just like for the entire company, however you want. You can see how many hours were logged by these nine people in this date range. And then you can also see unlogged hours. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference between logged and unlogged hours and what this means in a minute. So. Let me show you the beating heart of Timegram. Like, you know, this highlights tracker. This is our desktop app. Timegram consists of two parts, the web, the web application, this one, and the desktop application, this one. We have a desktop application for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. 
any any version and it works this engine tracks activity but look at this line this is key all data is private only you can see it so i'm working right now i'm doing this demo i'm like open i have google docs open stuff open and this engine is tracking everything but this activity is not being sent to an employer in real time i only i can see it until i decide to log it so if i decide to log it i go to the tracker i go to click add i click add highlights and then i figure out yeah you know um let's see if i i don't have any task assigned in this demo let me just quickly show you a different account where i have tasks assigned so i can show you better Sorry for the hassle. So this is the account that I'm showing you right now is an account that we often use at my own organization. It's not like well-maintained. I will use this one for demo purposes as well, but it will give you um, a slightly better view. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll come back to the tracker later. Uh, let me just quickly show you what the app is capable of within the demo account and the trial account. I'll get back to the log and unlogged hours in Tracker, but what we do is in Tracker, you select the activities that you want to log and you choose which task those activities were performed for. So let's say um, I have a task called product roadmap. And I will see the list of activities performed for that task. I will see five minutes were spent on Google Docs, um, 10 minutes were spent on email, uh, two minutes were spent, uh, let's say, browsing, just like researching on how product code maps are designed. I will see all of that activity very clearly labeled and categorized and segmented. I will select the activities performed just for that task, the task called product code map, and I will click save. That's when that activity will get logged. So let's say I work three hours. I select three hours worth of activity. I select the product roadmap task. I hit save. That's when my logged hours counter will get updated. So three hours of activity for product roadmap task. And the way you'll see it here is, let's say um, I look at this employee, Rob Strogden, just in this dummy data, right? This person logged, this, this person has a project called Battle of the Bastards, right? Within projects, we have tasks. So TimeGram is also a complete uh, project management tool. Here you see um, this project has this task and this task has, you can see the task details here, description and notes. In activity log, I can see exactly how much activity Rob Stark did. Let's see. This is the activity that Rob Stark logged, which means he selected and saved. The other activity, any personal activity or anything else he might have done for different tasks will not show up here. Only the activity that was done for this task. So for this task, uh, Rob Stark did this, this, this activity. He just like, he's a developer, let's say, and he performed this, uh, this work on Visual Studio Code. This, and you can see the amount of time spent here. Note that I marked this project as billable. So you can see, uh, according to the rate that I've sent for this per person, uh, for three hours and 42 minutes of work logged, the bill, the revenue earned is $74. And this is customizable. You can customize the task any way you want. You have custom statuses, you have priority, you have uh, start date, you have due date, you have progress. You can see everything in here. So this is how you can actually see activity that a person did for anything. But then you also have projects here, like I was just showing you. This is a complete project management tool as well. And it integrates with other project management tools that you might already be using and don't want to switch. So we have integration with Zapier. And using Zapier, you can integrate TimeGram with literally any anything else. Prello, ClickUp, Jira, Asana, whatever. So we have these projects uh, within my organization created in this sample data. This is the project, these are the tasks. Uh, and I can set expected time for each of the tasks here. Uh, so if I expect this task will take five hours and I see actual progress, we can see that out of five hours that I expected to be done for this task, three hours and 23 minutes have been logged. One hour, 37 minutes have been, uh, are remaining. So I can take, make corrective action or for example, for this task, I said three hours are expected, right? 
and you can modify it however you want. I can see that this task has one hour, 26 minutes logged, uh, one hour, 33 minutes are remaining. But if I see that, you know, the hours log for this task are five hours and expected time was three hours, that, that means two hours are over time for this. Like uh, maybe we're not doing uh, accurate work on this. Maybe we're like losing out on some unproductive activities, or maybe we just didn't scope it correctly originally. This task was supposed to take five hours at least. We thought it might take three hours. So in the future, if there are sim if a similar task comes up, I know that you know the expected time should be five hours, not three hours. Um, for projects, like we can assign teams to this. We have these three teams created. So I have house Lannister selected for this team. And if I select a team, if I add a team to this project, I can add members from that team within this task. So like, you know, I can add any member from that team. House Lannister is the team, and these are the people in House Lannister. They're assigned to any task. You can like change it however you want. With new tasks, all you need to do is uh, just like click here, new task, copy the details, click checkbox, uh, click right button, you're done. Your new task is created. If you want to create a new project, you just like put in the details, name, description, tags, uh, whatever you want. Um, lifetime deal, for example, here. I can add custom tags. I can add as many tags as I want. I can add tasks from within this. And if I want this project to be billable, I can add a client here. Right? So let's say uh, I'm adding Albert as a client here. Albert at uh, clienttest.com, right? And I add this client. Now, this client is associated with this project, meaning this project is now billable. And I can set the rate that I want to build this client. I set $40 an hour and I hit create. That's it, simple as that. Uh, I'll select the due date, I forgot to do that. I can select a custom color if I want to like uh, undefined quickly. And this project is now created. You can see it here, test project. And I can add as many tasks as I want. I can assign teams to it. I can assign people to it. And I can see project level progress and I can see task level progress. So this is our project management module. You can filter it however you want. You can select team members. You can filter by other conditions, status, duty, priority. If you just want to see completed tasks, you hit this and you can see completed task. Um, so yeah, this is the project management module. Next up, we have the team module where you configure user details. So these are the users that are active in my organization. If I click on any of them, I can edit anybody's details, name, job title, phone number, etc. And I can also set a cost rate for them. So for example, if I if a couple of people are working on a client project and I want to see how much I'm spending on getting that project done, I can set this person's cost rate. In the report section, I'll be able to see exactly how much uh, cost how much each project cost me and how much revenue that project made me. This is a very useful uh, feature for agencies in particular. We also have the team section. So for example, in any organization, you might have a development team, you might have um, QA team, HR team, marketing team. You can create teams and add members to any. You can also add, assign a team lead. So this team lead will essentially have a manager role and that team lead will be able to see everything that, that their particular team is doing. This team lead will not be able to see anything that other teams are doing, but he will have full control over their own team. Like they can add people, they can modify their details, they can see what people from their team are logging on projects and tasks, etc. So for example, uh, let's say if you're in a meeting and you're not in front of the computer, you're going into a physical meeting and you want to log it into the system. What you do is you go to Cracker, you add, you add manual time. This is how you select a task. If you have tasks assigned, you select start time, end time, and you set a description. So like in my case, the description would be, um, you know, physical meeting with client, for example, or on-site meeting with client in their offices. And I hit save. This manual time will then get submitted to your manager for approval. So in this case, if I'm, if I'm a part of a team, my team lead will get my will see our approval request and i can see if this was request if this request was approved or rejected here this is also a very handy feature uh just to keep everything within time ground 
whether it's in front of the computer or not. You can like add, add it as manual time if it's not in front of the computer. You also have invoices. Uh, invoices are automatically built based on billable projects. So if I go into, uh, let's say, uh, let's select a project that has mastered. The client associated with this is Dexter Gamble in our example. Let's select date range. I want to select, I want to generate invoice for 3rd of September to 14th of September. Email we already have assigned to this client. It will be automatic and any notes, for example, banking information if I want the client to you know, pay for this. So in this example, uh, we did not log any billable time for this client, so the amount is dollar zero. But if we had, the software, the time ground would automatically have calculated the number of hours logged between this date range. So 3rd of September and 14th of September, it would have seen exactly how many hours and minutes were logged for this project. And based on the billable rate that we had set there, it would have generated us an invoice and all i would have to do is uh, i would click this button and it would have been uh, i would be able to see it. it's a pdf here if i had added any uh, notes it would have appeared here so like billing information banking information etc so the invoicing is completely automatic if you want to use it and if it's paid let me just mark it as paid and that's it now this invoice is paid i don't have to worry about it anymore uh, my status here will get updated um, finally, we have the insights module. Um, if you want to see just like a general overview of exactly what my team is doing, I'll select team member Rob Stark. If I want to see Rob Stark, what Rob Stark did today, let's take a look. Might take a second to load. There we go. So for today, Rob Stark logged four hours and two hours and 23 minutes are on log. Note that we can only see the activity that anybody logged. We cannot see what they did and logged out. That's their private time, right? But we know they were working. That's why we have it here. Maybe they forgot to log it. They can, everybody has three days to log their time. But we know that this is something they worked on. It might be for work, it might be personal, but we know there's like they were in front of the computer at least. Four hours were logged for tasks. This is what we know. For this person, if you hover here, open task. You can see that this person logged time in this task. Battle of the Bastards is a project and fight of Ramsey Army uh, using Game of Thrones references. This is a task. They logged three hours and 16 minutes for this, uh, and two hours is their remaining capacity for the day. And this is the kind of stuff they worked on. Local host, 3001, they spent like 52% of their time there, and actually coding on VS Code, this was 47% of their time. This is again, uh, this is only sample data. In real life situations, this would have a lot more detail based on what your users are doing. I can see this report for whatever time period I want. I can see it for seven days, 28 days, custom time period, whatever. Then we also have analytics. You can see productivity reports for your entire team. You can see exactly who worked the most. Let's see this report, for example, employee time and activity. Let's give it a minute. I'm going to see employee time and activity for this week, right? So these are the people who are working for this week. This is their hourly rate, this is their active task. Um, Keon Greyjoy worked on two tasks. You can see from the dashboard which tasks they were. And total logged hours. This is again dummy data, so it's the same amount, but in real life situation, you would have seen exactly how much time was logged by which person during this time period. You can also see visualizations who spent how much time total for this week total time spent by team how stark worked 63 hours this week house lannister also worked 63 hours but house Greyjoy worked 42 hours so these are the kind of reports you will see uh in the insights section you also can see revenue and cost reports in this using this dummy data i don't have any billable clients so this will not be meaningful but in revenue report you can see exactly how much revenue was earned by a particular team or by a particular person. And I can see revenue by client, revenue by employee, revenue by team. Again, like I said, this dummy data might not have a lot of information. It's just like low amount of information, but you can still get a picture of what you're talking about here. So we have two clients, 
we earn this much for Dexter and this much for Kevin. You can also like filter it by, this is like showing you for all, the, yeah, all uh, the team members, but if you want to see it's filter about team, let's say I just like House Lannister. I'll see the stuff logged by House Lannister only. I can also filter out by a particular person. How much did Cersei Lannister make for me? Well, that's zero because uh, any projects assigned to her were not billable. She worked 21 hours, but those were not billable hours. So that's why I'm out to earn is zero. I can also see cost, how much I spent how, in terms of like employee salaries, etc., on any project. So Rob Stark, we paid Rob Stark worked 21 hours, let's say, uh, according to the billable rate, which is five hour, five dollars an hour. The cost was one zero six dollars for this week. Again, like this feature is mostly used by agencies, very powerful for them. And actually, like most of our uh, current customers, current users are agencies. So we have a lot of features specifically designed to improve management for agencies. Finally, we have here the settings uh, menu. You can be a part of multiple organizations. Right now, this is the organization we've created. Uh, you can download the desktop app that I showed you earlier here, this one. Just click here, download the app, and you will be there. If you want to create the administrator profile, like I'm the administrator here, I can do that here. If I want to like check out other settings, I can go here, organization settings, I can select my currency. I can select organization level, weekly user capacity. I can set, you know, this is when my weekday starts. And then we have the integrations, which are not rolled out on the dummy account, but we have the Zapier integration ready. So yeah, this is a very quick walkthrough. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I will be happy to answer them. I know this was uh, relatively fast, but you know I want to be. But yeah, open to questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Esan. So I think you have covered most of the uh, features in, yeah. in your app. So before we uh, go to the question, uh, I just checked that you know in the chat there are some people who has not the. Uh, give permission to this uh, wave video to show their post uh, photo and also their name. I think one of them is Barbara, I think, if I'm not wrong. Uh, please do that so that we can actually communicate better. Okay, Esan, I look at your <clears throat> time. I'm sorry, and... um, Albert, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Just like I forgot to show one thing, the tracker part, uh, the one that was causing issues earlier. So this is an actual account, a real account that we're using here, right? I also see like this is one of the most important things of Prime Graph. I was talking about the difference between logged and unlogged hours. And if you want to save your activity, you just go to add highlights. You select which task you worked on. Let's say I'm working for this, you know, miscellaneous work task. And I want to see what I did today. This this is the activity that I performed today, but all of this is completely private. Only I can see it right now. Until I decide to like, you know. So for this task, miscellaneous work, let's say I did this activity. Uh, I did this, I did this, this, and this. And I spent several minutes on this, but let's say this was not an, the activity for this task. This was some for some other task, so I'll skip that. Um, I spent like Google, let's see this and this. You know, these were, let's say these were the activities I performed for this particular task. You can see total selected is 15 minutes. All I need to do is hit save. After I hit save, that's when it gets logged. And that's when my manager or the admin or the account owner can see this activity. Until I do this, nobody can see my activity. It's private to me. It gets tracked, but it's private to me. I see. So that that means, uh, hold on. That means the employee has uh, some kind of, a, I would say, discretion or maybe freedom you know, on what, what to yeah. show it to you, right? Exactly. Okay, that's good. Okay, guys, uh, before we actually go into the question and answer time, I, I have uh, one question I want to ask, which I was a bit, little bit confused. Uh, look at the time gram F2 module. When you say the one code, two code, three code, when you say the users uh, see, let's say, for example, tier one, one code is five user. What is that user? Is it the user in the organization or what? Yeah, it's the users in the organization. For example, in this organization, in this case, we have nine users. So you would need two codes. 
for a okay, total of 10 users. Which means the user means that uh, you are tracking them, right? The users. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's say you have uh, uh, maybe 20 users you want to track. How, how are we going to do that? Because you only have three codes that is only 15 users. Uh, but they're stackable. Like you can purchase three codes at once, but then you can all go go in there again and purchase another code, a fourth code, or fifth code, or sixth code. You can oh, purchase okay. as many codes as you want. So uh, you you can actually uh, track more than uh, yes uh, more than three codes. Okay, that that's good yeah. because that was, I was confused, you know, because uh, I thought you you can't actually go more than that. Okay, that yeah. that's solved my question. Okay, yeah, let's move to the question and answer. And for those who are in the audience, uh, please uh, ask your question and then we will try to answer that as soon as we can. So, yeah, Uma. Uma said that this is a great product and uh, equally great founders. Thank you. Thank you Uma. very much. <laughs> okay. Mohan, uh, can employer back pay all at once? I'm not sure whether he means that you pay everybody in the organization or... Or not, not because it could be quite quite general. This question, Esan, what do you think? So um, we don't pay anybody through the application right now. We don't have a payment processor within it. But mm -hmm. what you can do is you can like create invoices and then you have to send invoices or like via email or whatever. You can like create as many invoices as you want in bulk, but you cannot like bulk pay anybody through the application because we don't have a payment processor right now. I see. I, I believe what he, what uh, Mohan was uh, meaning was actually, you know, uh, to maybe to create an invoice, you know, unless you say you're you going to go for a yeah. payment gateway. Okay. So this question, I'm not too sure who is it because I can't see the name. Uh, how does it compare with a Nifty.pm or Asana? So Nifty and Asana are project management tools, right? I've used Nifty and I've used Asana. So they're completely different. We're not a project management tool at all. We are a time tracking tool. We provide project management just so you can easily tie your time to outcomes. And the other thing is we provide a lot of integrations. So we have project management, which will allow you to integrate with other project man management tools. So let's say you are you don't want to use Timegram, but you do want to track your people, right? What you'll do is you'll pro you're, let's say you're using Trello or I don't know, in this case, Nifty. You can send your data from time ground, the logged hours, everything to Nifty. So whenever somebody logs their time, that data, that number of hours will get sent to Nifty for in this example. So we're yeah. like two completely different categories of tools. Definitely they are different, uh, different thing altogether, but then you have actually a project management kind of a module inside your, yeah. your software, you know? so yeah. that, that the strength of this uh, software. Okay, Suja is asking, detecting the IP or devices Mac ID will be great. Mm, I mean, we could capture it, but then it would, I think it would infringe upon our privacy first uh, USB. But that is a suggestion that I will evaluate further. Thank you. Mm, I mean, it depends. Uh, Esan, maybe, okay, you have an uh, very good overseas uh, employee. You want to track them, you know, uh, go by IP address, you know. <laughs> Maybe yeah. today he's in this town, tomorrow he's in, in another company in uh, out of state, you know, whatever. So then at least, you know, as an employer, you you know that where is this going, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. I don't I think... I mean, it's very easy to do. Like, it wouldn't require any additional development from our side. We can easily do it because we have operating level. Uh, we have the desktop app which can easily capture it. But we're intentionally not doing it right now. If uh, this uh, feature is requested by other people as well, we will definitely do it. Okay. Because I can understand the reason, like you want to be, you want to track location except as well. Okay, that's good. Can we connect it to company website using API? I'm not entirely sure of this question. Like we have APIs, like we can expose them uh, for integration purposes, but I'm not sure that uh, the advantage of connecting it to a company website. Like if you already have a internal portal, we can definitely expose it, expose our APIs and let you do it. Yeah, maybe Joginda, uh, please explain what do you want to achieve actually? Because this is yeah. a SaaS, and everything is available on the dashboard or whatever. So how do you want to uh, integrate it into the company website, which means for everybody to see or what? I'm not sure, please. Uh, 
ask uh, more questions so that we can actually answer that. Yeah. Nguyen from Vietnam, is it possible to customize the tags? Does Timegram integrate with Zapier and Make? Yes, tags are completely customizable. Like those are custom, you can uh, create whatever tag you want. And Timegram does integrate with Zapier. It does not integrate with Make right now, but it does integrate with Zapier. Zapier, uh, we, our Zapier app, app is under review with, uh, with Zapier Marketplace. They are reviewing it, and once they approve, uh, we'll post it on the production environment. But we have completed from our end, we have tested it thoroughly, and it's working very well. We did a proof of concept with Jira, uh, Jira integration, it worked really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will go to the next question, uh, Ankit. So it can track visited website as well. well definitely, you know, he actually. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Like you, it can track everything, not just websites. It can track all websites, subdomains, etc. Um, but it can also track your desktop application. So if I have Microsoft Windows open, it can track this. If I have Microsoft Teams open, it can track which chat. I spend my time on precisely, not just like, it won't just give you a general, like, you know, this was, uh, I use Microsoft Teams for three hours. It will show you that you spent five minutes talking to this person on Microsoft Teams, which is a desktop app. It will show you a very granular view. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Ankit, you, you know that, you know, you can, I mean, as an employee, you can actually, you know, uh, to what I call decide what are the things that you want to show to your employer, you know? So that, that that's yeah. a good point of this uh, app, right? Yeah, that's that's basically the best feature of Timegram, right? The employees yeah. feel more comfortable because they could be doing anything, but the employer will only see what actually they worked on, the time spent on actual work. Yes, yes. The, because... the employee will decide that, you know, this is the website I want to show to my manager, and this mm -hmm. is the time I spent on that website. Yeah, I mean, for example, uh, employee have an emergency uh, situation from uh, from home, so he need yeah. to take, you know, uh, to do some searching in the internet or whatever, do some calls or whatever. So he can do that, but then he don't have to report that to the employer. Then, then you are not paid based on those hours. You know, as simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Um, highlights, submitted highlights. I'm also taking a look at a question, uh, Albert. You cannot come back and edit the highlights of the day once submitted. Uh, that is not something that we allow right now because you can confirm before submitting, like you have plenty of time to just like review everything and submit it. But once you do save it, uh, you cannot edit them. That would be, that would affect the visibility of them for I guess. I mean, this, this is a level of trust, you know? So yeah. <laughs> to me, you know, I mean, a lot of employees, they, they might say that, you know, yeah, I give you something wrong, you know? So I'm not sure, you know, I've come across, you know, I mean, there are thousands of, uh, excuse you know that kind of thing yeah. so some people change their mind that kind of thing so i really don't know how to solve this issue <laughs> yeah okay next so... sajit is asking yeah, yeah absolutely if your writer is saying you know I'm, I'm gonna take six hours to create this blog you can exactly see what those six hours were spent on you can see why it's taking time it's completely possible that their research is actually it, the content that you're asking is right is actually very research intensive and you can see that you know this is really the amount of time they're spending but if they're not you'll be able to like you know catch it yeah i mean this is this is the purpose of this uh, time gram you know to track the employee yeah. so-called employee or outsource uh, outsource employee that kind of things okay Tauhid, any option for freelance employee to keep track the total pay amount of uh, day and day? of course that, that that's the purpose Absolutely. of this time gram yeah yeah um, actually, uh, there was a good question from Sam here. They're asking for API. Yes, we do have APIs. And yes, we can track multiple monitor screens. The way it tracks is it will track the active application. So right now I have the timegram dashboard open. Whatever time I spend on the active application will get tracked. If I have something on my other monitor, I have another application open. That's not going to get tracked because that's not my uh, active application. My active application will get tracked. If I stop, uh, if I stop activity on that active application after like a couple of minutes, it will mark me as inactive. And when I resume my activity, it will automatically count, uh, start tracking again. The rules of tracking are slightly different when you're in a meeting or when you're watching a video. So those in those situations, the rules are more flexible. 
but if you're not in a meeting or in a, uh, if you're not in a meeting or not watching a video it will just like crack your activity and it will give you some margin based on you know like if i'm working naturally i might be you know pause for a minute or two just think of something it will still count you as active for that much time after that it will be inactive okay so joginder has come back with the explanation why you need to show it to the company website basically is is an admin panel so showing data i mean integrate that your your dashboard into the admin panel no that kind of things this is doable with our apis yes it will require some custom work and involvement from our side but definitely doable because we do have apis okay so tawhid no uh, says that is there option to delete entry you know so no after you have some of that. course no right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I mean that that is quite 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 uh what do I say quite common you know so it's it's just like you you already say that you no know, you submitted five hours of work you know these are the details of your work so you submitted to your boss employer then you want to come back and change it unless yeah. they agree to you know so that kind of things. <laughs> oh. The deletion feature is good if you know for other tools where everything just gets automatically logged and sent to your employers then it makes sense that you know some uh, something that is not work related might get sent and you want to delete that and that's okay in that cases in those cases for time gram that's not relevant because you choose what you want to send to the manager okay asan maybe can you go back to the the screen where you the employee will actually decide what to show what to be submitted because some of them might not seen that you know some of the audience uh -huh. okay yeah. so here uh, you go to the tracker and you click add highlights this will show everything that our engine is tracking right and this is not everything that you see here is being tracked for today but it is not sent to the employer for today you can see i worked almost 3 hours you can see exactly how much time i spent on everything so file explorer 6 minutes i can expand this and these are the things i worked on uh these 6 minutes were spent and i can select whatever activity i want and that's i select the task where i want to log this activity and i click save this is once i do once i hit save that's when the manager sees the activity otherwise it's all private to you like i showed earlier in here the the tracking engine it says this here right here all data is private only you can see it and no it doesn't take screenshots so i Um Albert I cannot hear you. Can you guys hear me? Can can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Uh Ehsan. Testing, testing. Ehsan, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Uh can anybody hear uh, Ehsan talking? Please help me to put it in the chat box. Okay, while he's uh, refreshing his uh what they call uh his screen. Okay, guys. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes this okay. happens as I told you. <laughs> yeah. My browser is working. <laughs> okay. So yeah, can you just share your screen again because uh, I think that will be helpful. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay, while you are sharing the screen, uh let me send them the link to the giveaway prize uh participation form. Uh guys, uh I will share the screen now. Uh share the link now. 
in two places. So go and type it yourself. Uh, I, I don't want to type it in the chat. So it's very simple. Go dot downloadsilo.com slash timegram form. Okay, go and fill up the form, three questions, and we will enter you in the giveaway. Okay, let's move on to the question. Okay, Sam was asking, can you integrate with Flowloo? Flow is another PM project, uh, PM uh, app, you know? So. Um, you can integrate. If Flow allows integration with Zapier, then you can integrate it. Anything that connects, and Zapier integrates with more than 6,000 applications. If any application integrates with Zapier, then we can integrate with it. So our integration is via Zapier. Mm -hmm. We are building native integrations, but the priority for those native integrations is like Jira, ClickUp, and Trello. Those are the key ones that we're focusing on right now for native integrations. Okay, in the LDD community, Asan, uh, Pebbly integration is actually uh, very popular. Are you considered to integrate? Pebbly that? is something that we're considering. Mm. Let me show you something quickly. Um, we have, and I'm pretty sure we have Pebbly integration in there as well. Okay, that's good. Okay, we don't have Pabli here, but yeah, it, it has been requested. Um, I will put that on the roadmap. Just yeah. to give you guys an idea, this is the public roadmap that we have. We, Nifty integration is something that many users have requested, so I put it here. But I will add uh, Pabli integration here as well. This is public. Anybody can just like go to timeground.kenny.io and they can see it. Okay, that's good. So, yeah, Sam, I think he, he just came in uh, not too long ago. He said, can I customize timing like inactivity, screenshot, interval? Um, inactivity and intervals can be customized from our end, like for your organization. We don't have a UI for um, users right now, but that's also like we're working on that. We should have that out within a month at most. We do not take screenshots. You can like customize the timing for inactivity and like the inactivity for videos, for normal work, for meetings, but we don't take screenshots at all. Okay, ever. what this question is, uh, I want to ask uh, Esan, what is stopping you from taking screenshot? <laughs> I mean, it might sound so a stupid question. Yeah. It's it's a very like we have all the tech to get screenshots, but we don't want to take screenshots because that is against our main value that we are providing. Right, we are privacy first. What, what we're saying is if you can get a very clear view, a very clear picture of what your people are doing within this application, why do you need screenshots? Because screenshots will make your people uncomfortable. And like I discussed before, when your people are uncomfortable, when they don't really want, when they're not comfortable using the solution, they are always going to find ways to cheat the system. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, this is a uh, screenshot is very invasive, definitely, yeah. because it's like, you know, under a CCTV, you know, even though it's, it's just a screenshot, you know, so yeah. that's why people I mean, feel very When I was working, like, I know I, I did this myself, like, five, six years ago, like, with screenshots, what you do is, you know, that, you know, uh, you kind of, like, estimate the interval, and you just, like, switch to a different screen, like, you know, you move your mouse or just, like, hit random keys and take a screenshot. Your employer thinks you're working, but what you're doing is just, like, fooling the system. That's why we don't take screenshots. Because it takes the focus away from outcomes and deliverables. Okay. Yeah, that explain you know the rationale behind that. Okay. <clears throat> so Deep is asking, <clears throat> is there an option to add apps in the ignore list so that it doesn't track? This is a very good question. Uh, and this has been requested by a number of users. Uh, my team, two of my developers are actually working on that right now. And we should have that really, really soon. But in the meantime, you can take just like, you know, uh, if you don't want a specific application submitted, you can just like not select it and submit the rest of the uh, URLs. So that's mm -hmm. one way. Okay, Tawhid, uh, screenshots are not taken. So yeah. we have just spoken about that. And Bill, these two appear to be teamwork. So Rise is a good solution. I have used it in the past and we have taken some inspiration from Rise as well. It's a good tool. But Rise is just like you said, it's for personal working, right? For freelancers or like people who just want to track their own hours. Timegram is for team activity, team tracking. Okay. So, yeah, definitely agree with what you say. Yeah, I think we have answered most of the question, uh, unless 
Anybody have any other question or else I will move to this uh, giveaway. Uh, while I'm doing that, uh, Esan, can you just continue to say whatever you want to say? I will just collect the name first uh, from the... Sure. So, yeah, um, I would just say that, you know, people often think that if you take screenshots, you'll be able to keep, uh, keep an eye on what people are doing, but that's the wrong approach as I've seen from my own experience using time trackers for like many, many years, both as an employee and as a manager. If you take screenshots, if you take, if you track activity in real time, people will try and cheat the system. And as a manager or as an employer, you will not get an accurate view of what your people are doing because the focus of your people will be on just like completing their logged hours. Everybody will just try to, you know, log their 40 hours, uh, regardless of how much time, how much work is actually done. I am guilty of this myself. So I know that, you know, with this kind of approach, you're never going to get res good results. That's why we built time ground. Like I built it for my own company, the company I was working for at the time a year and a half ago. I've since moved full time to time ground. So, yeah. Okay. So let me share my screen, uh, for those who have not, uh, record uh, put in your name in the list uh, please do so now uh, before we actually spin the okay so this is the wheels of names uh, where we will spin all the names okay let me sort the name and check any repeated names yeah i see one uh, joginda okay So I have a few more names to be added. Okay, let me copy and uh, put it on. Add it on in, into the list. Sorry. Yeah, I guess uh, we have all the names here for those who have uh, who are present and also fill up the form. So we will have uh, five uh, winners uh, today. And the prices, uh, let me go back and check. <laughs> we have three prices for tier one, uh, one price for tier two, and the last one is the tier three. So this is a quite a lucrative uh, giveaway. So we must thank Esam for that. So before we actually uh, spin the wheel, uh, let me see what should I say. Okay, I think we have one more question from somebody. Oh. Vice Musa, very generous, yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, if you are ready, I will just spin first three uh, winners for those uh, tier one. Let's go. Uh, Esan, should I? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's go. Ankit. So Ankit, are you there? Uh, please type your name as usual to make sure that you are there to claim your prize or else we'll we spin again until we get the winner. Ankit, please do so. Yeah, I there see. Your name. Thank you. Remove your name and this is the first name. So the second winner, we will shuffle again as usual, make it as random as possible. Let's go. Barbara Ramos, yes, Barbara, congratulations. Are you there to claim your prize? Please type your name. Shiva Kumar, you have strong white <laughs> that you may win this giveaway. Oh, well, sir. You're very positive. I like that. Okay, Barbara Ramos, are you there? If you are not there to claim your prize, I will just spin another time. Barbara Ramos, can somebody ping him or? Oh. 
Is it there to claim the price? Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay, Barbara, I'm calling three. Um, Albert, I'm sorry to interrupt. I do need to jump into another meeting in three minutes. So if you could just like spin it and sell, yes. send me the list of winners, I would be happy to send them the codes. Yeah, okay. Or I'll okay. just like send it to you and you can like process yeah, it. No problem. You, right? So uh, guys, uh, just uh, say thank you to this uh, Esan and uh, and good luck Esan uh, for your launch in this uh, Epsomo. I will spin the rest of the name uh, with the audience. Thank you very much, thank everybody. You. Thank you. It was a pleasure not to you. Bye. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, Barbara Ramos, you are here. Since you are first time winning the prize, if I'm not wrong, so please type your name. You know, your name is not I'm here. Your name is Barbara Ramos. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. Uh, we will spin the third winner for the tier one. Let's do it now. Let's shuffle again. Barbara, yeah, I have to remove your name just now. I forgot to remove. You are the winner. Okay. <laughs> you are. How good are you? <laughs> you are very positive and you are a winner. Thank you. But Please type your name. Siwa Kumar. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's not your name, right? Please type your name. Okay, that's it, you know. Thank you. So we'll spin the fourth winner, which is actually uh, will get a tier two uh, LTD. And the last winner is a tier three LTD. So we we'll spin the last of the two prizes. Let's shuffle. So this winner will be tier two uh, LTD. Briefly. Brave, are you there? You must be very brave guy. Yes, thank you. Brave, you are the third uh, fourth winner. You win a tier two LTD. Let's see who are the winners. Ankit Desit, Barbara Ramon, Sivakuma, and Bravely. So we have one more prize to go. That is tier three. Uh so called the biggest prize. Let's go. Ryan Muhammad. Ryan. Ryan, I think you are a new member, if I'm not wrong. Finally, you win. Thank you, your name is there. Look at it closely. Okay, Ryan, uh, congratulations. <clears throat> okay, let's remove your name. Sorry, I'm running out of voice. Okay, these are the five winners. Uh, Ankit is it, Barbara Ramos. <clears throat> Siwa Kumar, Bravely, and also Ryan. Okay. So we will announce the winners and uh, procedure on how to claim the prize. And let's stop sharing the screen. So guys, uh, this is the end. And as you say, uh, this software, uh, Timegram, is uh, different from other time tracking. You know? So there is no, no uh, what they call screenshot tracking. And uh, the person who being tracked decide what to be shown to the boss you know what what they have actually wanted to be shown to the boss because they give more confidence uh, for on both parties so i guess that this is all we have today and unless you have any other question please ask in the chat and the team from time Gram will actually go and answer that while we are uh, at the end of this uh what do you call seminar a uh, webinar <laughs> seminar I just want to remind tomorrow we have another webinar called this uh, AIQR art, you know, uh, with Adam Tram from Vietnam. 
and Thursday we have this rain X. Uh, no, Wednesday we have this uh, uh, rain X. You know, uh, payment gateway, uh, recurring subscription uh, software. Then Thursday we have a Blaze uh, Blaze transfer. Okay, and we might do another one in Friday. Uh, we have not decided, so we are still discussing. So guys, uh, thank you for your coming, and we hope that you know everybody have a good health, good business, and everybody is happy. That's all. Bye bye.